you're going to want to go real hot on my mic tonight, um, just so that everyone stays awake, okay? Um, somebody came up to me um, after the first service and said, hey, just so you know, I fell asleep during, during the service today. And, um, and, I, and I just said, your sins are forgiven, go and sin, sin no more. So I, I absolved her of her, of her, of her sins. Um, and so anyways, I, I'll, do my, I'll do my best to, to, to try to keep you engaged. Um, I, I know um, hell is hot, but it's hotter out there. 80, degrees today. Can you believe that? No, I, I don't know what it was, but I, I do know that in, this, in the second service, a notification came up on my, on my app, and it said that we had broken records today before noon. Anyways, yeah, it's, it's intense. It's very intense. And um, uh, if you don't know Jesus, um, you're going to want to know him because you think it's hot out there. Hell is hot, my friend. So anyways, I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to meet, to meet Jesus um, uh, at the end of the service. If I forget, just remind me. We'll, we'll get you saved. Don't worry. Um, good, good, good. Hey, if you got your Bibles, uh, turn with me to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Only four verses tonight. Um, and if you've never been to an SRC service before, really big into our Bibles. In fact, for the last year, we've been studying the book of 1 Corinthians, um, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And um, we've been calling this series uh, Church Under Fire, because um, the church really has been under fire recently. And um, and so uh, uh, kind of a double play on, on words, looking at the, the church in Corinthians, um, uh, in Corinth, they went through some some crazy, crazy uh, stuff, and they had to be called out on some various issues. Um, it's been a lot of fun. It is coming to an end. Only two more weeks in the in the book of First Corinthians. Aww. Okay, um, but this fall, uh, this is going to be this is going to be crazy. Um, this fall, we're going to start a, a new study. It's going to take about a year, and we're going to go through the entire book of Genesis. Just say, ooh, you know, the entire book of Genesis, we're calling it Origin, Rediscover Your Beginning. Ooh, yeah, so it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. Genesis is crazy. And then when we're done with Genesis, are you ready for this? We're going to study the entire book of Revelation. So we're going to study the beginning and the end. Um, the Bible begins with the wedding. The Bible ends with the wedding. The Bible begins with beauty and perfection and glory. The Bible ends with the restoration of all things. And so the Bible's not really a timeline. It's more of a circle. So a lot of people are waiting for the end times. I'm waiting for the beginning. So we're going to go back to the future. It's catchy, right? It's catchy. It's catchy. It, it, it could be a movie or something. Uh, also, um, our, uh, Andrea and I, this last week, okay, so... Um, this next week, July 1st, my second book comes out. Um, it's called Carve, How to Steward and Sustain a Move of God. And so I've been doing various promotional things and interviews to kind of promote the project. So this last week, Andrew and I flew into Arizona, where we are on the uh, Katie Souza show. And we got to uh, talk about the book. And Katie says, hello, SRC. I love you. So we love you too, Katie. Um, and then that night, we got to do this like so, uh, surprise birthday thing for uh, Patricia King. I, I was so glad to have Andrea with me. Um, I was sitting at this table at this Mexican food restaurant with all women, okay, all these women, and then and then and so I was so glad to have and and, I, and then like the dude, um, anyways. And so it was great to have Andrea. And then um, uh, uh, the next night was kind of like the big su the big party for Patricia. That was amazing. Um, Papa Cheon was there. Um, you guys know Cheon? Yeah, he's the guy that when in California, they went to, the state went to shut down all of the churches in, in, in California. Now, Cheon, his family's from North Korea. So Che's father escaped North Korea. And so where a lot of people are, were willing um, to be pushed around by the government, Che's like, no, 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 our family escaped that oppression. We're here in America, and we're not willing to bow to that. So Che and, and the church there at Harvest Rock, they fought the state of California, okay? And, um, uh, and it went all the way to the Supreme Court, and they won against the state of California. Not only that, when it was all said and done, they went and actually sued the state. Now, I know the Bible says that you can't sue another brother, but it doesn't say anything about you can't sue an ungodly government. 
So they actually sued the state of California and they won and they, they got all, all like, uh, 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 I forget the amount. It was well over a million to pay for all of their legal fees and all, all, all of that. So anyways, Che is, che is the man. And, and there was uh, Weston Stacey Campbell there. Sandy Jacobs was there. Uh, James Gall was there. It was, it was, pretty, it was pretty amazing. Um, uh, I was also kind of, uh, I, was, I was glad that Bill Johnson wasn't there. He made a video. And I was also glad that the Arnots weren't there. Because if, if, if all those people had been in the same building, if for some weird reason the building had blown up, there would be no more revival presence on the earth. Because literally every revivalist was there. So thank God. That's the way I think. <laughs> I need prayer. Okay? All right, good, good, good. So that was absolutely amazing, and it's so good to be back. Today's been an incredible day. Uh, we've had such a great time in our morning services, and you guys are my favorite. So it's good to be here at the 6 o'clock. Okay, tonight we're going to be talking about kingdom finances, and you'll, 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 have, you'll have a choice that you, you have, yeah, that you have to make. And the choice is this. Um, are you going to be a um, religious Christian, or are you going to be a kingdom Christian? And th- there is a difference. Um, you have the heroic nature of Christ Jesus within you that where there's a solution anointing to solve problems that exist here and now. Okay. I don't know if you've noticed, but sin's just, sin has just kind of messed everything up. Sin has just, it's messed up cities, it's messed up neighborhoods, it's messed up nations, it's messed up families, but you have the true vaccine, <laughs> you've got the, okay, you've got the true solution within you, and it's Christ Jesus, the hope of glory. So you are a hero created in the heroic nature of Christ Jesus, and the villain the big bad wolf that, that is coming to get us, uh, that's coming to sabotage the kingdom destiny for our lives and for our country is the villain of religion. So if you are a kingdom Christian, you're going to live your life differently than religious Christians. Why? Because the spirit of religion, the villain of religion, always comes to get us to be self-obsessed. So if we were to talk about finances through the lenses of religion, I would just give you a mirror, and I would preach the entire time about how God wants to make you rich, so you, got, you can have a, a bigger, fancier cars, bigger, fancier houses, bigger and fancier uh, 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 bling on your, you know, and listen, noth- nothing wrong with Uh, necessarily any of those things, but you can have all of those things and not be any sort of hope of glory on the earth. You can have all of these treasures and, and be robbing the earth of the treasure that is Christ Jesus. So religion always comes to make us the prize. Religion always comes to take the, the gospel and the scriptures. And it always comes to say that all of this is about you. All of this terminates uh, upon you. And so if you want to pack a church out, then, then tell people how the whole Bible exists to make people um, uh, 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 happier, better looking, make more friends, um, have, a, have a better uh, relationship. With you. Like, like, like how can we engineer everything so that even though we profess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we get to be our own functional Lord and Savior and so religion is popular. It will always be popular. There's a lot of religions, and sometimes there's not a, a big difference between the Christian religion and all these other false religions, especially when you look at the amount of power that, that the Christian church is professing, and yet the amount of power the Christian church seems to be possessing when I've got pastors in the area here um, that send their their demon possessed people to our church or they say we don't know how to handle a haunted environment so you should call Seattle Revival Center I, I would say this hey the kingdom of God is at hand if you declare Christ Jesus your Lord and Savior you should be in possession of his mighty power 
And if you're not walking with a manifestation of his power, honey, that should bother you. It should bother you. And, and, and it shouldn't drive you to, to a place where you buy more books or you subscribe to more e-courses. It should bring you to your knees. It should bring you to the cross. It should bring you to Jesus. God TV, YouTube, Sean Bowles, uh, Bethel, Seattle Revival Center, make for a lousy Lord and Savior. You don't need a guru. You don't need a middleman. You need Jesus. And so this is the wake-up call for the American churches. Are you going to be a religious Christian where everything is, is consumed on you? Ah, feed me. Like the, the job of the hut, American Christian. Blah, 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 blah. Why, why did you leave that church? Because I wasn't being fed enough. Ah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Seattle's going to hell in a handbasket with a pink ribbon around it, and we can't even find a place where I'm not being fed. Why are you so fat? Can we start over? You are loved in the house of God. I'm so, I'm so glad that you're here. I brushed my teeth before the service started. If we could do a close-up. Just declare, religion, you're a demon. You're not for me. I'm hungry for Christ Jesus. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you, Jesus. Jesus, you are the king of glory. And you and your kingdom have permission to reside within me. I belong to you. My family belongs to you. My finances belong to you. I give you permission to hijack my programming so the world can be changed by your faith, hope, and love. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen, 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 amen. Okay. All right, everyone there? First Corinthians chapter 16. I promise I'm going to be a lot nicer um, for the rest of the... Well, maybe I shouldn't make promises. All right, well, we'll just do our best here and forget the rest. Good. All right, First Corinthians chapter 16. And uh, Okay, one more. I, I know, we're supposed to be reading, but one more announcement. This is super cool. So next Sunday is uh, uh, Independence Day, right? July 4th. So there's no service here. Um, and the reason why is because um, I'll be lighting off thousands of dollars of explosives. No, I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. No, no. The reason why is just because we want you to have, you know, a barbecue and celebrate with your family and all that. So that's, that's good. But if you come to one of the, the first services, if you come to the 9 or, or the 11, we're going to have the unveiling of what we're calling our Liberty Wall. And so um, some, somewhere out there, somewhere out there is going, is going to be our Liberty Wall. We're going to unveil it at the 9 and the 11. What it is is it's a wall um, that's going to be gorgeous. Uh, it's going to say, we the people, painted paint it on the wall. And then we're going to have framed, these gorgeous frames I've seen. We've got the, uh, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution of the United States. So that's, that's going to be really cool. And that, so that's at the 9 and the 11. And then at that night, you'll just be barbecuing and celebrating and not doing any fireworks because that's not legal. Okay, here we go. 1 Corinthians 16. Now, concerning, okay, so this is finally, Paul says, hey, we've talked about a lot of crazy, wild stuff. We've talked about a lot of stuff that Pastor Darren would prefer not to have to talk about in, in a local church setting. He says, but our final issue that we're going to talk about um, is a special offering that I'm going to be receiving. He says, it's the collection for the saints. He goes, now, this isn't just for you. I also gave these same giving instructions um, to the churches of Galatia. So
So just as I instructed them, you also should do the same. Now, we, we're going to see here in a second that Paul's going to receive a special offering for the church in Jerusalem um, because there's some stuff that's going on there. The church in Jerusalem, they are in a uh, season of famine. Also, the Christians have been cut off from the Hebrew welfare system. Okay, So if you're a part, uh, poor, widow, orphan, you don't have any sort of income, you would get resources um, from the, the Hebrew kind of welfare system. But if you became a Christian, or what they called the fo- what a follower of the way of the Christ, then you'd be cut off from those resources. So we know that the church in Corinth is quite successful. Okay, um, they're they're medium to upper class. They're they're doing pretty well for themselves. But the church in Jerusalem is going through a very difficult time. So Paul's going to use the majority of his bandwidth, right? The the majority of his of his energy on his third missionary journey, going from city to city, giving them instruction. That's what apostles do. Building up the saints, okay? Encouraging them in spiritual gifts. Confronting them where there's um, sin issues. But he's also going to spend the majority of his energy receiving a special offering to take back to the church in Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem, okay? Pretty big deal. That, that's where our faith kind of went viral. That's where Holy Spirit came down in the upper room. A hun- our, the church was about 120 people, okay? Experienced a little bit of church growth, okay? Um, went from 120 to 3,000 in a day. I don't like it anymore. Why do I feel, feel like I know anybody. You know, that, that was that thing, you know, and each day thousands are being added to their number. Yeah, you know, yuck, you know, people, <laughs> Okay, and, um, and so uh, 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 Jerusalem is the kind of the apostolic hub for Christianity, and, and Paul feels indebted. In fact, in the Romans, uh, Paul would write to, uh, uh, in Romans, that, that the church has an obligation to support their, their spiritual mothers and fathers there in uh, Jerusalem. So he says, hey, um, the last thing we're going to talk about is this special offering. I gave instructions to the churches in Galatia. I'm giving these uh, instructions to you. He says, on the first day of the week, okay, uh, that would be Sunday. So we know that the Hebrews, the Jewish people, they would celebrate Sabbath on Saturday, the day uh, that, that the Lord rested, okay? Um, but it says here, on the first day of the week, which would be Sunday, the day that the Early believers now celebrated the day of the resurrection. So Jesus was resurrected on a Sunday, and this became the day uh, uh, that the Christian saints of God would remember the resurrected Christ. They would gather together. They'd sing together. They would eat together. They'd drink together. They'd break the bread and, and, uh, and remembrance of the body of Christ that was broken. They would drink of the cup and remembrance of his blood that was shed. They would laugh together. They'd cry together. They would, they would confess their sins together. This was, this was the, the, the church. And so uh, if you were Hebrew, you would go and you celebrate, you'd read the Torah and go do your thing on Saturday. And then, uh, and then on Sunday, you would worship Jesus, the, the Christ, the, the risen Lord. Now he says on Sunday, um, I want for each of you, r- basically in private, to put something aside and to store it up um, as he may prosper. Or if you're looking at the NIV, it'll actually say there, um, as as your income is determined, something along those lines, um, so that when I come there, I'm not going to have to do a special uh, financial push or a a special uh, uh, collection. When I come, you'll already be prepared. You've already been saving. You've already been setting your your funds aside. Now, I will say that this text, you can't just take this text and preach it at people. Uh, And the reason why is because um, uh, context determines meaning, right? So we have to look at the context, what's happening here, and say, is this the kind of thing where we can just like turn it into a stamp and stamp our church with it. It's really not. This is a very unusual, uh, special offering uh, that's, being, that's being done. Think, uh, think about this for a second. Um, think about we get a letter from somebody that's not here part of our church, but somebody that we submit to. I, I just want to show you how unusual this would be. Uh, we love and respect, we honor Bobby Connor as a prophet in this house. So I want you to imagine for a second that we get an email from Bobby Connor and it says, um, Hey, <laughs> now I'm going to be, I'm going to be there at, at SRC. God bless you guys. I miss you guys. I'm going to be there in October. And this is what I want you to do. Every Sunday before you go to church, 
Um, I want for you to go to your bank account. I want you to sign in to your online bank account. I want you to look at your funds. And as you, as you have been prospered, as your income determines, I want for you to, to set up a special account, okay? This is, this is your day of worship. This is between you and the Lord. This is no one knowing what you're doing. But every single Sunday on the day of worship, I want you to go to your online banking, and I want you to take a certain amount of funds, and I want you to drag and drop into a special account. Um, because when I come there, uh, you're going to bring you're going to bring all that money, okay? And you're going to you're going to you're going to store it. You're going to get it in cash, and you're going to bring it in black duffel bags. You're going to bring it to a- a- SRC, okay? You're going to bring all that money, and then I, I'm not I'm not even going to have to mention it because you've been saving, you've been doing all this, um, and then when I come there, I'm going to take I'm going to take all that money, and I'm going to take it to Mozambique, and we're going to bless a church that's really been suffering because COVID has really caused a lot of problems in Mozambique. They're really suffering, and and there's a church church there and 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 the pastor hasn't eaten in 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 in, in, in a couple of weeks his family's starving so we're going to take this and we're going to we're going to build them a new church we're going to do all this we're going to take all these fun like this is what is happening here that's unusual especially to our american brain in, in fact our american brain would say no red flag yeah bobby we love you but that's not happening now check it out here um and, I, and I'll, get, I'll get all these funds when I come. That's what Paul says. Look at, and when I arrive, I will send to those whom you accredited by letter uh, to carry your gift to Jerusalem. If it seems advisable that I should go also, they will accompany me. This is what he says. Listen, I realize that when I come to Corinth, I'm going to be getting so much money. There's going to be so many black duffel bags full of cash. It's going to be so sketchy that I want for you to appoint people that you love and trust because in the kingdom, financial accountability matters. And they can take the funds to Jerusalem. And so this is what it would look like. Here comes Bobby Connor. He comes to SRC. And we say, hey, at SRC, we love and trust Pastor Keith Webb. He's on our financial team. He used to be our executive pastor. We know that Pastor Keith is a man of integrity. So Pastor Keith appoints a couple of deacons. They grab all these black duffel bags full of cold, hard cash, and they meet up with representatives from Morningstar. They meet up with representatives um, from, uh, from International House of Prayer. And here, are, here is this entourage of trusted people with integrity. And here they are. They're, 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 I mean, these, these guys make the three wise men look poor. They got all of these, all of these resources, and they, they take all of these black duffel bags to Mozambique. They get there to the church, and the church is starving, and, the, you know, and they're just without and like they're just like they've been praying for and here come here come here come the the ambassadors representing the church of Jesus Christ and they begin putting all these all these black duffel bags um 20 30 40 black duffel bags as they begin to open them up and take out the cash and begin to present it to the people to the pastors to the apostles in Mozambique that you don't have to worry anymore we're going to take care of you because we're family because we're kingdom and that's what kingdom does That's weird. That's weird. No one would ever do that. Well, that's exactly what's happening here. Paul's going to return back to Jerusalem with a love offering represented from many different regions and with diplomats, assigned trusted diplomats who are coming to present this offering to the apostolic center in Jerusalem. It's beautiful. It's incredible. Now, the reason why we, we, we don't necessarily see this a lot in the church in America is, again, because we tend to function with a religious paradigm, meaning that um, the church kind of, uh, churches, okay, churches, we're, 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 we're a little, little C, a little church, you know, we're not the universal church, but we're a reflection of the bigger church. But American churches, they function kind of like mom, pa shop, hardware stores, now, some of you have no idea what I'm talking about, okay? A mom, pa shop, hard, yeah, yeah. The, the way it works is you go into a mom, pa shop, hard, store, and they've got, they've got some hammers, not a lot of hammers, like three hammers. They've got nails. They've got screws. They've got hinges. They've got stuff. The problem is it's very, very, very expensive. 
Why? Because they don't have the quantity of product. They're not able to order wholesale, right? So um, the church in America, now this is probably just a lousy illustration, but I want you just to go for the ride with me anyway, okay? And so you've got all these churches, okay? And they're trying to offer what they can, okay? But the problem is that nobody really goes to these little mom and pa shop hardware stores. Why? Because everything is just way too expensive, right? And so where do we go? We go to Lowe's. We go to Home Depot. We go to these places where, um, where, they, where they've got like a thousand different kinds of hammers. Like they've got, they've got anti-gravity hammers. Like that, that like that will, don't even work until you go to Mars. Like, like, like you go to Lowe's, they just got everything at a, at a pretty good price. And then you got these, these mom and pa shops that are dying, struggling, closing, and nobody, if I was to give you the stats on the churches that are closing right, especially, it, it, was, it was really bad before COVID, okay? But since COVID, there are so many churches, and we're not even talking about little, little churches. We're talking even about mega churches that are not going to make it, okay? And what we don't see are apostles writing letters, raising funds, and saving these churches. Why? Because even though we say we believe in the body of Christ and we believe in the church of Jesus Christ, we don't really believe that way. We don't really function that way. We all operate independently. We operate with, uh, with, with a certain independent, autonomous uh, mindset where I'm in it for me. Right? And there's kind of this isolated sort of thing, but Jesus is changing this. There is a tide that is changing, and it, what is it? It's an incoming tide called the kingdom. And there is, a, there is a unity that is coming. And guess what? As Paul went in his third missionary journey to all these different churches, he says, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to help the church in Jerusalem. Help them. They, should, they shouldn't be in a financial crisis. Why weren't they saving? Yeah. Why didn't they do Dave Ramsey? They sh where's their emergency fund? They don't even have an emergency fund. I'm not going to help Jerusalem. It's stinking Jerusalem. It, that, that, they, they were the big dogs. This is help Jerusalem, right? And what we actually see is we see this modeled, okay? The apostolic church, there was one church in many different locations. You could go to Ephesus. You could go, go to Galatia. Um, we had our activation school um, get together this last week. So we all just got together. And, and, and we, what do we call those, Jeanette? Activation school. Um, they're called wrap-ups. And what, what we do at activation school wrapped up, I don't know if you've ever been to one, is I ramble for six hours. And then I do a Q&A and everybody asks me different questions. So this last week, we had 18 people joining the church. Really cool. And somebody raised their hand. And they said, Pastor Darren, how do you do church discipline? Do you bring, when somebody's in sin, do you bring them up to the front after like trying, you've tried to correct them, you've tried to rebuke them, but they don't care about what you, what you say. So you bring them up to the front and you say, hey everybody, this is Carl and we're excommunicating Carl because he won't repent. So if you see him at the grocery store, don't even talk to him because he's in sin and don't even talk to his family. We're excommunicating him. No, we don't see that a whole lot anymore, even though I went to a church and they did that with my mom. That was interesting. And <laughs> no joke. Well, stay focused. I know, I know you want to hear about it, but. <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. Why? Because if I bring up Carl, I say, hey, everybody, this is Carl, and he's in sin, and I, we've rebuked him, and, and somebody else came to him first. He wouldn't listen. So church leadership came, and he still isn't listening. So we're excommunicating him. If you see him or his family at the grocery store, don't even talk to him. That wouldn't work. Why? Because when I call up Carl to say, hey, can you come to church this weekend so we can rebuke you publicly, what's he going to do? He's going to say, yeah, I don't think I want to go to SRC anymore. I'm going to go to Christian Faith Center. <laughs> All right, peace out. <laughs> right? The thing is, there's not, the Church of Jesus Christ in America, it's not like a Macintosh. Okay, that's, uh, let's not go there either. It's like an IBM. Uh, okay, All right. <laughs> It worked in the first century because if you got excommunicated in Corinth, that affected your membership in Ephesus, in Galatia. That affected your membership in Rome. That Why? Because there was one church 
with respected appointed apostles and it was not an easy church to join because they were persecuted you would be you would be vetted to make sure that the profession of your faith was true and legit and if you weren't walking out a lifestyle proven with what you're professing you'd be kicked out of the church and that's what we see within this new testament kind of place We've got, to change, we've got to change our mindset from Seattle Revival Center is my place of belonging where Seattle Revival Center in and of itself is where I will discover my identity and my destiny. And we have got to step into this place where we see Seattle Revival Center as a reflection of our citizenship to the kingdom of God. I want you to declare this with me right now. We belong to the kingdom of God. You do not belong to SRC. You belong to the kingdom of God. You do not belong to SRC. We are not a franchise. We are not a Red Robin. When you come here, we do not have a big menu of, of hammers and burgers for you to pick from that we do not exist here at SRC to serve you. Nope. We exist at SRC not to give you a table in the non-smoking section and to tell you what our, what our specials are. This is not a restaurant, this is not a nightclub, and this is not a Starbucks. We are not here to amuse you, although sometimes we're pretty amusing. When, the, when you come to SRC and you say, I, Pastor Jaron, I don't know what it is, I don't know what it is, I, uh, uh, when I come here, I just, I got something resonating in me, what is it? I call it apostolic resonance. It means that when you come here, there's a part of you that says, just like Roy and Victoria said, the very first Sunday that they came here, um, they'd never been here before, and he says, give me a hammer and some nails, I'm ready to get to work, let's build something. Apostolic resonance is when you say, listen, um, uh, I need some help in a couple areas of my life, but, but guess what, I'm here to plug it, uh, don't give me a menu, give me a towel. We don't exist to serve people. We exist to create an environment where we can come together and submit to each other and serve one another. And within this dynamic, we begin to communicate and collaborate and kingdom manifestations begin to pop because where there's unity, God commands a blessing. And now you can say, I'm a better person, not because of Pastor Darren's sermon. I am a better person because I'm collaborating and connecting, and I have found a place where there's apostolic resonance, and now I'm being equipped to come into the fullness of who I am because I know that when I come into the fullness of who I am, it will bring the rest of the tribe up. And that as we begin to see kingdom realities established on the earth, Seattle, Washington will be better because of us. Why? Because we won't be looking for Seattle to serve us. We will be looking to collaborate together to serve this great city. Declare with me right now, I belong to the kingdom of God. And your involvement here at SRC is a reflection of your participation in something that is so much stinking bigger than what we're doing here at SRC. And I'm telling you, if you come here, you love here, you serve here, you build relationships from here, you have crazy encounters from Jesus here, and then all of a sudden, what's, what's going to happen? Just a matter of time until you hear Jesus say, now go. And then we bless you, and we send you, and we release you. And that's, that's when you are on an apostolic assignment. The word apostle means a sent one. So we see Eric up here, and he says, I'm sorry I don't have a VRBO. I'm sorry I don't have all the extra stuff, but this is what I know. Me and my family, we were called to Malaysia. We were faithful in Malaysia, and now we're, I'm sorry, we were in the Philippines. We were in the Philippines. We were faithful there, but now we're on our way to Malaysia. Can't get in there quite yet, so we're going to Indonesia so we can learn the language.
language so we can communicate the gospel to people that are predominantly Muslim. And we have, we have, said, we have said that all of the stuff that defines you as cool and successful within the worldly kind of understanding, we have said we're going to put that aside because we're going to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing that everything else will be added unto us. And we don't sit back and say, well, that sucks. You don't have $16,000 yet. No, no, no. We say, you're a part of the kingdom. I'm a part of the kingdom. You, you got the same king as me. We're a part of the same city. We're a part of the same nation. That, that this isn't a religion. I, I, I am done with American Christian religion. I am saying yes to the king, to the kingdom. That means that Eric's problems are my problems, and my problems are Eric's problems, because we're in this together. Our giving brings us together. Paul went to all these different places. He says, I want you to participate because as you participate, you will now be in harmony with all of these other regions. There will be this collaboration in our giving that there is a unity that is created when you get, Jesus would say that where your heart is, there your treasure is. And so if you don't really care about Malaysia, then, then, then you, should probably, you should probably hold the McCoys in your heart. You should probably sow a sacrificial seed into the McCoys by going onto our app or going onto our website or, or just getting an envelope and designating it, putting something in the memo. I designate this gift to the McCoys. Why? Because I know that Jesus loves Malaysia and I don't love Malaysia. I don't even know where Malaysia is. I've never even eaten at a Malaysian restaurant, but I know that as I sow of my heart into this family, into this couple, I'm going to begin to care because when I put my heart somewhere, I begin to care for it. <laughs> Declare with me right now, I belong. I belong. Satan's going to say, you don't belong here. No, no, I belong. I belong. I stink and belong. I was created for the kingdom of God for such a time. I just, just say, say something. Shake the person next to you and just say, you belong. You belong. You belong in the kingdom of God. All right, number two, declare this with me. We believe in the kingdom. Why? Because we believe in the king. Now, here, here's the problem. In America, we're, we're, we're a pessimistic species. Americans are pessimistic, especially when it comes to any sort of government or any sort of uh, politics or any sort of, any sort of leadership, right? And, and so it's like we're, we're, we're somewhat hypocrites because we sing at the 4th of July, and I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. But then we go right on with trash talking on Facebook about, about the government, about the politicians, about all this. And we say we're proud to be, you know, you, you know an, an, an American, um, but there's not, we, we, don't, we are not really proud of our country. We're not really proud of of our president. We're not really proud. And it doesn't matter who's in there. If it, I mean, if, if, I mean I, I'll tell you, there's a, I don't know if you know this or not, there was a lot of people that were not very proud of President Trump. I don't know if you knew that or not. Sorry to break it. I, we're a pretty sheltered conservative group here at SRC. Oh, what? Wait, no, wait, no. How could you not be proud of President Trump? There. 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 There's this thing, and, 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 and here, here's the deal. It's difficult for us to think kingdom. Why? Because America, right, in 1776, found her independence by rebelling against the kingdom. Our country was founded, was, was originated in a rebellion to overthrow and to cast off the restraints that were put upon her by a kingdom. So if you were born in America, you don't know what a kingdom is. Here's the problem. That's all Jesus preached. Why? Because when Jesus talked about the church, the ecclesia called out ones, he wasn't talking about little buildings on corners, independent, shutting down and nobody even knows. Here's another church, dies. It's, it's, and nobody even knows that the church, whatever happened to that church? I don't, it's been closed for five years, bro. 
this, 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 this place. Um, Jesus was not talking about cute little local churches. When Jesus is talking about the church, he's talking about a nation. Why? Because the kingdom is a nation. And it, and it doesn't just start the 80 times reference in the New, in the New Testament. It, it, it begins in the beginning. We're going to go through it. At, we're going to look at Genesis. We're going to look at Abraham. And God, this is what God says to Abraham. Abraham, I'm going to bless you. Yes, I am. I'm going to bless you. But it's not a religious blessing. It's not a religious blessing. Because if it was a, re- a religious blessing, it would terminate on you. But this is what I mean. I'm going to bless you with the kingdom blessing. Abraham, I'm going to make a nation out of you. We think of individualistic blessing that terminates on us. God thinks nations. Why? Because it is his desire that heaven would be reflected through prototype communities on the earth. And that's what we call the kingdom of God. The alliance, the allegiance, and the submission of a people that say, I am not the king. He is the king. He has a literal kingdom with values, with laws, with principles. And I have pride in this king. I have pride in this kingdom. All right. I want you to pretend for a second that, you, that, that we live in a literal kingdom with a castle. Ooh. With, with, a, with an actual king, with a big crown, with gem- and this kingdom is, this king is like legit. Like, unlike any worldly leader, this king is just like, he's righteous, he's just, he never ever lies, okay? And he's really stinking rich. In fact, he's so rich that if you live in his kingdom, you're really, really, really rich. Because this king is so generous, okay? that he actually paves the streets of his kingdom in gold. That's, 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 how, that's how, how rich he is. And this king, in this kingdom, he offers all of his inhabitants, all of his citizens, what do they get? Protection, resources, their own special kingdom language. And there are these, these kingdom laws. And unlike the laws maybe that we have in our country, we're like, what? Are you kidding me? I can't go fishing because of a pandemic? Man, forget that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I didn't fish in 2020. Okay, here's the thing. These laws, they are from such a just king that the inhabitants of this kingdom, it is such a pleasure to obey these laws. Because this king is so amazing. He's so awesome. He's so loving. He's so just that we just consider it such a pleasure and such an honor to do right by this king. No cancellation culture. No speaking ill on Facebook. We have pride. We have no embarrassment. No, no. There's a big difference between pride and embarrassment. Can I tell you something? We live in such a kingdom. And we have such a king. And it's time for believers in Jesus Christ to stop being embarrassed. Why? You are a part of the kingdom of God. You have a fair, just, and generous king that bestows upon us resources, that gives us a language, that gives us family, that restores to us dignity, that restores to us honor. And he does it without us even having to really do anything. He who knew no sin became all of my sin so that I could become a royal ambassador and diplomat before I've changed anything. I'm radically and infinitely loved and accepted and known and adopted by this king of glory. Guys, we've got to believe in this. We have got to believe in this. We've got to break, we've got to break out of the, the, the religion box. The religion box that says, I am my own king and I'll profess Jesus as my savior, but I am my own true functional savior. I am my own true king and we can't be friends anymore. Why? Because you're threatening my lordship. You're threatening my authority. When when you believe in the kingdom, when you believe in the king, nobody can threaten your authority. 
Nobody can threaten your identity. If you only knew who I was, if you only knew how prophetic I was, I, I should be on God TV. The only reason why America doesn't know who I am is because my last pastor was a Jezebel and I stayed there for 30 years and he controlled me and he manipulated me and the best time of my life is wasted because of that Jezebel pastor. At this point in time, you should give thanks that you're not a full-time pastor. <laughs> the stuff that we get to hear, it's wonderful. No, if you are blaming a person for not being where God has called you, then you're not taking responsibility, which means you're not standing in your authority, which means that you're still waiting for people to give to you something that only can come from God. What you need isn't a title that comes from Pastor Darren. What you need is a blessing, a good and perfect gift that can only come from your Father of Lights. I'm doing a Disney tap dance. Here... Seattle Revival Center doesn't need your money. That's why this isn't like a big offering teaching. That's not, that, like if we, if we wanted money tonight, we'd, we would have waited on the offering. I would take a really big convicting and I would tell you, if you give $100 tonight, God's gonna give you 100 bananas. And if you give $200 tonight, God's gonna give you 500 bananas. Ex exponential multiplication. That, that's religious manipulation, okay? And it's coming to get you to do, it says, you do and God will do. Yep, but what does the kingdom say? He has done it all. I am not deserving of his blessing. I believe in the king and his kingdom. Therefore, I give not to get 100 bananas. Why? Because I am in the midst of bananas. You can't manipulate my lack because I don't give from lack. I give from abundance. Because I have, I freely give. And because I freely give, I freely have. I like what Justin Abraham says. You want the avalanche? Honor the snowflake. We believe in his kingdom, which means we take the little bit that we have, we break off the poverty mindset, we say, I am in possession of the king and his kingdom. All this other stuff, I am in possession I'm living a life of abundance. I don't care what worldly wisdom says is abundance. I say that if I have Christ, I have it all. And I have pride in that. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed of this king. I have pride in this king. And if we could get a kingdom mentality in SRC, if we could get a kingdom mentality in, if, in Darren, if, if we could get a kingdom mentality in churches all across the Pacific Northwest, the, the church of Jesus Christ would subvert the demonic principalities that have had their way in Seattle and in this region for way too long. These principalities of intimidation, just like Goliath, that have not been challenged by Davidic generation. Why? Because we have been obsessed with ourselves, with mirrors in front of ourselves. We think that Christianity is a self-salvation project. The devil is a liar. Break the mirror. Find Christ. Find Jesus. And declare with me, I believe in this kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. All right, third thing, just declare this with me. His kingdom empowers me to give. In this kingdom, there's no taxes. It's funny because in the, in the morning service, there was a couple uh, guys that woke up at that point. They were like, what? No taxes. Huh? Wait, wait, wait. You, know, you know, in the kingdom of God, there's no taxes. This is what Paul says. Look at verse 2. On the first day of every week, between you and the Lord, on the day of worship, Okay, this is between you, this is, this is intimate, you, you put something aside. It doesn't say 10%, it doesn't say 20%, it doesn't say 30%. It says, put something aside in accordance with your level of prosperity or with your income. Why? Because 
In the religious church, we tell people without an income that if they go into extravagant debt to give on their credit card, that God will bless them. But in the New Testament church, if you didn't have an income, the church was your income. Are you with me? In the New Testament church, if you were a widow, you didn't have an income stream. So we would not be preaching to widows to get them to do something foolish, to get them to give of what they do not have. If you didn't have an income stream, you came to church. We were your income stream. There wasn't government handouts. Okay, there wasn't a welfare system. All you had was your family, and if you didn't have your family, all you had was your community, your religious community. What if there was just a 20% restoration of the apostolic first century church in our context? And what if we said, we're going we're gonna to honor the snowflake, we're going to get the avalanche, but we're not going to use the avalanche to build a golden fountain out in the parking lot. We're going to use the blessing of God to help the poor, the widows, the orphans. We're going to use the blessing of God to get people off of government handouts. And we're going to, we're going to use the blessing of God to see the poor amongst us brought up into a different tax bracket. We're going to use our blessing to equip people to be successful sons and daughters. We're going to use our blessing. I'll, I'll tell you something. In heaven, everybody has a home. In Seattle, there's a, you know, I just heard in L.A. they have over 100,000 homeless people, and that's just in L.A. That's not the entire state of California. Just in L.A., 100,000 homeless people. And I don't even know what the stats are in, in Seattle. In heaven, everybody has a home. And Jesus said, you pray this way, in Seattle as it is in heaven. How are we going to do that? Not with 100 more years of Darren sermons. We're going to have to get a kingdom mindset. We're going to have to get to know this king. We're going to have to be able to show ourselves faithful. We're going to have to come into this place where we don't give because of a tax that's been put upon us. Paul said, take what you have. If, you have, if you're in a place of abundance, put it away. Put it, put it to side. Put it to his side. And when I come, I know, I know that, 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 the, that there's going to be a generous, generous response. Andrew and I, we, we tithe. If you don't know what the tithe is, a tithe just means a tenth of your income. Okay? So we tithe. But we don't do it because we're afraid that if we don't, the king's going to curse us. Why? Why? Because Jesus became a curse and hung his curse upon the tree. And I don't have a fear-based relationship with my dad. I never had a fear-based relationship with my earthly dad. I don't have a fear-based relationship with my heavenly father. Well, then why would you tithe if you weren't afraid of the curse? Because I so love the Lord. I so love his kingdom. Andrea and I so believe in what Jesus is doing on the earth that we count it a blessing to be able to set up. We have an income, okay? If we didn't have an income, this would be, this would, this would be different. We'd have to find a different way to be able to contribute to the kingdom of God. But Andrea and I, we both have an income, and we are so grateful to the Lord to be a part of this kingdom that we just set it and forget it. The, the tithe, it just, just goes out automatically. We don't, we don't even, yeah. It's our rhythm. Because if you don't have a rhythm, you don't have a song. What's your rhythm? Your rhythm is your government. So if I was a composer and I had a band, I would say, here's our government. Three, four, this is your time signature. I would say there's three beats to a bar. And then what happens? It repeats. You want to know what happens when something repeats? You don't have to think about it. So this weekend, Andrea and I did not sit down and say, what are we going to tithe this weekend? No. Why? Because we have a symphony, and our symphony is three beats to a measure. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And because we have this rhythm, we build up. When you have a rhythm, when you have a government, you can begin to build. Why? You have a financial foundation that you can begin to build upon, and it's not fear-based. 
It's not. No, it isn't. It's love-based. We are in love with the king. We've got a lot of pride in our king. And we don't give here because Seattle Revival Center needs our funds. We give here because his kingdom has empowered us to give. Now, we still get to have conversations. We still get to talk about what we, uh, 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 what we sowed. And, and we didn't get to talk about this, but I sowed into the McCoys today. Because Andrew and I, we, we just, we love this family. We believe in this family. But what does that mean? You set up your rhythm, and then you begin to build up. And then you begin to pray, and then you begin to obey. And you begin to sow in different kinds of things. You begin to set up your, your kingdom portfolio. Andrew and I have the Philippines in our spiritual portfolio. We're about to have Malaysia in our spiritual portfolio. Yeah, we have Mozambique in our financial portfolio. We have Indonesia in our financial portfolio. We have these different, these different kinds of, and, and what are we doing? We're, we're saying, Father, I'm going to be faithful with the snowflake because we're about to step into the avalanche. And as a local church, we refuse to use the blessing of God just to build a golden fountain. We believe that we're going to steward people, places, things, finances, and resources. Why? Because giving has very little to do with money and everything to do with the heart. We as a kingdom community want to hold the city of Seattle in our heart and not just give funds, but give of our lives and our resources, knowing that Jesus Christ is the king of glory. He is within us, and we are going to let him loose. Therefore, we don't give under manipulation. We don't give under control, and we don't give with a mirror, saying, I'm going to give in this offering tonight so I can pay the cable bill. No, no, it's time for your breakthrough. It, it's great to have a season of miracles and checks in the mail. I still pray for them. <laughs> Every now and then, a- a- Andrew will be with me. I'll, I'll just be like, God surprised me today. <laughs> this is funny. This is really funny. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I said, to, I said to the Lord, Lord, surprise us today. And I, and I pray this with unexpected blessing. Surprise us today with just with unexpected blessing from you. And we were given that day a German Shepherd. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for, right? Said to Andrew, just the other day, he said, God surprised us today with unexpected blessings. I said, last time we prayed this, we got a dog. What's God going to give us today? When you pray, pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven. Hey, Dad, every good and perfect gift comes from my dad, my king. I am royalty. Our Father who art, I, I know where you be. Hey, Dad, I know where you be. Yeah, hallowed and holy is your name. Let the locale of your justice and righteousness, your kingdom jurisdiction, let it come. And let your sovereign, holy, righteous, and just will be done. Right here, right now, as it is there. Give us today our daily prophetic revelatory data. And forgive us all of our trespasses as we have forgiven those who have trespassed, who have violated our boundaries, who who did not treat us right, who sinned against us. Forgive us of our iniquities as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation. Father, give us a sovereign ability and grace to say no to sin. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from the effects of evil. I'm in your kingdom, and I know that your kingdom protection is a part of the benefits package, who heals all your diseases, who forgives you of all your sins. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. How long? How long? How long is this kingdom? It's eternal. It's eternal. It's the kingdom that just keeps on. We did two weeks, the last two weeks on death. And this is what we learned. For the son and for the daughter, there is no death. 
There's just a momentary sleep and then you're awakened and then you're resurrected and then you're transformed and then you are in your new glorified body. We talked last two weeks. You and I are in need of a body that's built for eternity. You're a part of a kingdom that's forever. You're a part of an eternal kingdom. And you don't have to wait until you die to step into a revelation of what's to come and what's available here and now. Father, release your here and now into my here and now. Father, release your here and now into my here and now. Father, release your here and now. Release the fullness of your perfection. Release the fullness of your kingdom. Release your here and now into my here and now. In my here and now, there's some lack. In my here and now, I, I need some hope. In my here and now, I feel overwhelmed. In my here and now, I don't feel like I'm measuring up. But Father, in your here and now, there is the fullness and completion of your identity and perfection and I know that I am in you and I know you are in me. I know I'm not an orphan. I'm a part of the royal family and I know that I have not because I ask not. So Father, King, King of glory, I ask that your here and now would invade my here and now so that my here and now can invade the darkness and the hopelessness and the, and the despair that exists here on earth earth. The kingdom of God is inside of you. The kingdom of God is at hand. Father, give to us a full understanding of kingdom wealth, kingdom finance, kingdom knowledge, kingdom alliances, apostolic resonance. We're here to build. We're here to expand Eden. We're here to see this glory begin to permeate the fabric of our culture, to permeate the fabric fabric of society. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that your kingdom possesses the solutions and the anointings to address the conflict created by sin, created by fatherlessness. And Lord, we pray that through us as a covenant people, that the message of the Father heart of God and this gift of reconciliation, that it would not only be heard, but it would be experienced through our submission, through our loyalty, through our trust in you, King Jesus. We surrender. We surrender. We give up our religion. We put down our mirror and we seek you, O King. We seek you, O King of glory. We seek your righteousness. We say you are the prize. We thank you, Lord, that even this last year you've been preparing our hearts. You've been adjusting things. You've been, you've been realigning relationships. There are some people that used to be in our lives. They're not in our lives anymore. And yet there are new people that are in our lives that you have brought into this new season. Why? Because you're positioning us for a new season. You're positioning us to begin to pour out from our vessels and people will realize that's not water anymore. It's wine. We thank you, Lord, that your promise is you will save the best wine for last. And God, we pray that we would serve your very best to Seattle. We would serve your very best to Newcastle. We would serve your very best to King County, to the King's County. Would you stand with me? Can we just pray for a second? Would you? Let's just pray in the spirit for a second. Heshikiyasu to kushu to kushiki sidi yakishidi. 
Would you just begin to bless the bride of Christ here in this region, okay? Just begin to bless the various churches and ministers and intercessors. Just begin to prophesy refreshing, refreshing over the saints in this region, refreshing over those that are thinking about quitting the ministry, refreshing for those that are thinking about getting a divorce. Yeah, refreshing for those that are even considering even committing suicide because they don't think they have any hope. Just begin to use your voice. Just begin to declare hope and refreshing for the hearts of the saints, for those that are on the front lines, for those, the, for those who are in the kingdom and they, they don't feel like they're part of the kingdom, they, they don't have anybody coming with an offering. They don't have anybody coming. And we, we seek you, Lord. We seek you, Lord. We seek you, Lord, for backup, Lord, for those that are suffering tonight, for those that are in Jerusalem tonight, for those that have been cut off from resources, from those that think that, think that nobody cares about them. Lord, we seek you, Lord. We seek you, the king of justice, the king of provision, the king King of finance, God, that you would step in, step in, step in, step in. We intercede tonight for this region, God. We intercede for the Pacific Northwest tonight, God. And Lord, we ask, oh God, for refreshing for the hearts of the saints, Lord, for refreshing, Lord, for courage, Lord, for strength, God, that they would mount up on wings of eagles, that they would run and not grow weary, that they would walk and not grow faint. For those that have become weary in doing good, Lord, we ask you, for joy unspeakable and full of glory, that the joy of the Lord would be their strength, that the joy of the Lord would be their strength, that the joy of the Lord. I see, I see like, I see churches where, where the enemy, the enemy has like, like the power cord and he's about to unplug them. And I see the enemy rejoicing because he thinks it's as good as done and I see the enemy thinking that he's about to unplug a bunch of churches throughout the Pacific Northwest. It's like he's got the cord. He's like, this church is done. This church is done. And it's almost like, it's almost like the believers inside, there's no fight left. Come on, church, let's pray. 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 May the Lord rebuke you. May the Lord rebuke you. May the Lord rebuke you. Drop the cable. Drop the cord. We declare this is the church of Jesus Christ. And we repent for rejoicing in churches failing. We repent of jealousy when churches have succeeded. We repent for our religious attitude, our pride and superiority. God, we ask you to give us a kingdom disposition, a kingdom spirit, Lord. We ask, Lord, that we would wash the feet of the bride of Christ here in Seattle. And God, we pray that your Psalm 91 refuge wings would come over the bride of Christ in the Pacific Northwest. And we say, oh church, you are not defeated. You still have fight in you. You still have fight in you. You still have light in you. You still have hope in you. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Get off the ground, get off the ground. We cheer you on tonight. We cheer you on tonight. Resurrection life. We prophesy resurrection life, resurrection life, resurrection life. We prophesy resurrection life over the bride of Christ. Jesus, we pray that for every one church that's closed her doors, that five churches would be planted in this region.
healthy, vibrant, apostolic, supernatural, dangerous churches. I also see, I see people, I see believers that don't even necessarily believe in the supernatural accidentally stepping into supernatural realities. You're going to hear of pastors doing some crazy things that they didn't even necessarily believe in, and yet God's grace is going to come upon them. And we're going to cheer them on. We're going to cheer them on. We're not going to be jealous. That Pour out your spirit on all flesh, King Jesus. Let our sons and our daughters prophesy. We declare that restoration realm from Joel chapter 2. And we declare that place of kingdom finance as seen in Joel chapter 2. That sets up the fabric for a move of God. Lord, I ask for a supernatural move of God in our finances that would prepare the fabric for a supernatural move of glory. I pray that we would first see something in the natural realm begin to be established, and then upon that foundation would come a move of the Spirit. If tonight you're saying, God, I make myself available as a conduit. I want to be a banker in the kingdom of God. I want to be trusted to steward finances for the kingdom of God, for churches and cities and nations. If that's you, would you just hold out your hands in just a receiving posture? Darren Stott has nothing to give to you. Our King of glory has everything to give to you. Father, by your grace, I pray for an apostolic blueprint to be deposited into hearts all across this room. I pray for battle plans that are unprecedented. I pray for the, for the, for the wisdom of the Lord that far surpasses even the wisdom of King Solomon. I declare strategic relationships and kingdom alliances. I, I declare friendship with kings. I declare vision so there can be provision. And I declare rest because we are our very best when we are at rest. There's a multiplication anointing here. If you need multiplication, it might be to have children. You can take it by faith right now. If it's a multiplication on finances, you can take it right now. If it's a multiplication of faith, you can take it right now. If it's a, a multiplication of revelation, just take it right now by faith, by faith. Not from Darren, but you take it from the king because I see good and perfect gifts being handed out tonight. Christmas has come early this year. I, there's, there, it, there's this, it's the gift of life and life abundantly that's here tonight. It's the spirit of hope deferred, deferred that makes the heart sick that's being subverted and kicked out of your soul tonight. It's permission from the king to begin to dream again and to dream big. It's repentance to allow your small dream to come into the capacity of the king's dream. Just take it by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. The substance tonight of things hoped for and not yet seen. 
that without, it's impossible to please God. We say we believe. How many of you, I'll open my eyes, how many of you, the Lord's put a dream in your heart for a nation? You're asking the Lord for a nation. Just keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Eric, would you come? Would you release a blessing? Did you know that, that there is access to nations, even in the spirit, and nations have access to what we are accessing here tonight? Just hold up your hands real high. When you were sharing, Darren, about uh, the, the enemy having his hand on the, the plug, I was reminded of this, something the Lord spoke to me back in January of this year. We were at a church service in North Carolina, and we were singing that song, who can stop the Lord Almighty? You know the song. I wrote this down in church. I said, while singing the song in church today, I was impressed upon by the Lord that even as the enemy has believed that he has stopped the gospel from going to the nations this past year, the Lord has different plans. He is the Almighty God who is going to shock the enemy just as he did when Jesus resurrected on the third day. There was a shock and an awe that went forth in the earth. When the enemy thought he had the victory at the crucifixion, the Lord Almighty shocked and surprised the enemy with a victory in which he never saw coming. The Lord Almighty is about to shock the enemy once again with an end time victory that the enemy does not see coming. Come on, come on. Lord, let's release that word, Lord, over this house tonight, Lord God, Lord, that there would be an end time victory, Lord, that there's nothing can stop the Lord Almighty. Nothing can stop you, Lord God. We declare that, we believe that. Nothing can stop your kingdom from coming to this earth, Lord. So we receive that tonight, Father. Lord, I pray right now for those who've lifted their hands tonight, for a nation, Lord God, a people group, a place, a city, a, 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 a group of, 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 of people that you've called them to, pray for, to love on, to reach out to, to spend time with, to intercede for, Lord. Father, I pray that your anointing would be upon them in this hour, Lord God, to, to intercede for them, to see your kingdom come to this people, for them to be able to go and proclaim the gospel to the nations like never before, Lord. I pray that for the church at large, Lord, that there would be an unfolding of the gospel in this end time generation, Lord, that we've never seen before, God. We want to be a part of what you're doing in the nations. We know that nothing can stop you, Lord. Nothing can stop you. We're on your side, God. We're going to be a part of what you're doing in this end time harvest, God. So we pray for that harvest. I pray for that harvest. You said the harvest was plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into the harvest. Lord, we pray to you, Lord of the harvest, send forth the laborers, the apostolic sent ones into the harvest, Father, like never before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God, stretch out your hands. Eric, come here. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the sent ones, the McCoys. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are their shepherd. They shall not want. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're preparing the way for them. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that when they get to Malaysia, it'll be like the, the nation has been waiting for them. It'll be just like the nation receives them. And when they get to Indonesia, it'll be like, like you've prepared the way for them. And the nation will just receive them. And their roots will go down. And they will begin to bear much fruit. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for Eric and Jenny, for their beautiful children. Lord, we thank you that you are their king. And you are going to demonstrate your faithful kingly authority in every area of their lives. And we bless them and we call them blessed. And we count it an honor.
to be linking shields with them. We count it an honor to see them going back to the nations. We thank you, Lord, that the nations are opening back up and the missionary, missionaries are beginning to go back to the nations. And Lord, we thank you for this new season of ascending from the United States of America, of, of, of missionaries to the nations. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that this wave of missionaries, there would be a, 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 a distinct glory upon them. There would be a distinct favor on them. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, Lord, that, that, we, Lord, that we are about to see even a new revival of missions, a, a new wave waves of missionaries going from the u.s into these nations with with the paradigm of the kingdom inside of them to go to these nations and to displace those generational principalities with the ancient of days with the great i am with the jesus the christ lord we glorify your name in all the earth in jesus name everybody said amen love you love you love you love you love you it's been good third time's a charm right Come on. Listen, if you need prayer for anything tonight, come on up. Um, um, our ministry team would love to pray with you and, and bless you. Otherwise, um, you're going to have to go back to your really hot home now. <laughs> You'll be okay. You'll be okay. But you're going to have to go home. <laughs> you are loved. God bless you. Have a powerful week.